some of you are going to feel that wind fill your lungs tonight. My God. And I've been feeling it. Cole, can you come up here real quick? <laughs> this is really sweet. When, when we talked about this testimony this morning and read it, my friend Aaron Yarno posted it online. Um, both my wife and I began to cry in our rooms because we realized, like, we do outside events like this, and you always kind of wonder what's the fruit. <laughs> and we're so happy just to see people happy. We're so happy to see marriages. I know that there's a marriage inside this tent right now that has been restored because of this tent revival, the field of dreams. But I also think that Jesus stopped for the one, didn't he? And so I want to ask Cole a question because y'all might not know this, but and I thought he was invited by somebody, but I think God might have pitched this whole tent just for him, even though we've all been blessed. But your testimony is making all kinds of Christians cry online right now. Do you want to do you want to tell them how you found out about this? Yeah, um, I had no idea that this was going on. Honestly, it was a series of God's divine intervention. Yeah. So I finished unloading over in Lenor, you know, kind of our foods. Uh, tried to get a load over here to Nashville, couldn't. Just stood it over here, got my mail, did shopping, went to a truck stop, couldn't get a reserve ticket at the TA, right? They were sold out. Oh, and they tow, by the way. So I was like, well, I don't feel like getting towed. Checked on Trucker Path. This was like the closest truck stop. Called him. Hey, you have any spots left? Yeah, just a couple spots left. Uh, when he came back and checked, got like one of the last two spots here at the Speedway. And after I did my physical therapy Friday, which he had no idea I was right. been doing physical therapy, by the way. Um, I saw the sign for the tent revival, and then I saw the tent, and then I was in my truck, and I, from my truck, I heard you guys, like, singing, and, you know, what was going on, came out, I was like, and I just came over. So you were a trucker. Yeah, yeah, I'm a trucker, over the road. I um, saw the tent. And I saw the tent, yeah. So you guys think this and, and, and last night, not only did he recommit his life to Jesus, and he told my friends, if you're not gonna clap, the rocks might. <laughs> Think about it, guys. We were here at the right time, at the right place. Jesus is way smarter than we are. So, and then he recommits his life to Christ, and then he tells my dear friends back here that he's been running from God for, for years now, but that this revival uh, invited him in to be the bridge or invite just to be the platform for him to have a touch from God again in his life. So he's telling he was telling Sean the other night I'm going to start my ministry now. <laughs> What's the name of it again? I just bought the domain name right now. God's Warriors Team. See, we love you, Cole. On the website now. You know, we got so drunk in the spirit last night. Me and Cole, he, we were laughing. You haven't felt that like in a long time, have you? No, it's been years, maybe even decades. <laughs> decades? Yes. We used to do stuff kind of like this when I was in my college age. Like there was a barn and we would actually gather Friday nights and do, but they didn't have like a live worship. He just put songs together on the tracks and like, yeah, people would wave flags and people would follow the spirit. Casting out demons. I love it too. He's connected with our friend Sean, and Sean's got the Bread Global, and they're discipling people. So it's really cool to see that in our city. And if if you want to win people to Jesus, but you want to lead them to Jesus by helping them obey Jesus and follow Jesus, get on board with Cole. Come on. Because we're going to train him up to be a leader. That's what you guys are going to do. And so I'm telling you, and then you, it, it's it's going to be amazing to see how quickly he'll 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 step into leadership. Because the church they they want to take years to like give people like degrees and stuff, but God can do it in days. It's a now. It's now. Come on, redeeming the time for the days are evil. 
So we just speak a blessing over you, and we speak over you that you're going to answer this destiny, this call, and it's going to be easy, and you will not have the road blockades that were there before, for the Holy Ghost is making a way for you, Cole. We bless your spirit, man, to come forth in this season to shine for Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So you'll just remember that. If it was just for this trucker, man, it was worth it all. Amen. Did anybody have a healing test or anything? We didn't really plan this, but did anybody just want to shout what God's done for you real quick? If you don't, I'm putting you on the spot. I realize that. Did you? Yeah. If you got healed uh, the last few nights in this revival, just raise your hand. If you got delivered, raise your hand. If God did something for you. Raise your hand. We want to see what what's happening around us. And listen, man, tonight is we're just they, they say the end night, you know, can be the no, the end night's going to be the, the biggest night. God saved the best for last. And he brought Debbie here to bring that glory realm in. And it, she carries that from Ruth Ward Heflin. And it's like, dude, I honor that. And if you need miracles tonight, press in because God's God's got your miracle. And I want to say something right now. I might even challenge some of you. If you feel like leaving early, challenge yourself to stay as late as you can tonight. <laughs> Uh-oh, I should have said that, right? If you can put an extra hour, like, okay, just lose one hour of sleep. Think about it, because like last night, the greatest level of glory came at the very end when everyone else left. <laughs> so I can tell you, we're probably going to be lingering tonight. Now, that doesn't go for all of you that need to drive, you know, far. You know, if you got to go back to your state, we understand. But can you believe all the testimonies? Can you believe all the people that drove out of state? Look at what God's doing. So we're excited. Listen, I just want to do this quickly. And uh, it's my favorite part. Really, it's my favorite worship to Jesus. My, one of, the, one of the, my favorite ways to worship to Jesus is through our giving. And I want, to, I want to give a testimony tonight. I shared this at Jennifer's Dark Horse School. And then I want to just uh, give you guys a chance to give into this revival and what's happening. And uh, I remember when I first got saved and uh, I was really birthed uh, through the birth canal of revival. We, we joined a church where um, stuff like this was happening, healings, miracles. And it was just it was it was just beautiful. And uh, everyone look at your neighbor and just say, because I, I really want you to hear this. <laughs> I really want you to hear this. So this ha this literally happened. I was I was actually uh, just saved and I was planning a mission trip to Sweden. And I didn't I didn't know like if I had money. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to raise money. And then I was also planning a mission trip to Africa and to Nepal and India. And so and this is around the time where I met Jennifer. And I'll never forget. I was at a church service. Um, just like this in a revival meeting and the Holy Spirit said you got you got a lot in your bank and I was like yeah I know <laughs> I got seven hundred dollars in there and um, I all of a sudden felt like what would what would happen do you ever do you ever have these moments in your life where you're like I'm going to I'm going to gamble on the Word of God and just see what happens not like gamble like a sin but I'm gonna take a risk and see if Jesus really is gonna prove you know what he says and that's actually in the Bible, in Malachi 3, the Bible, God says, you know, prove me. Tell your neighbor, prove. God's, God was actually challenging people, and he still is, test me. And, and he never really said that anywhere else. In fact, Jesus rebuked the devil, and he was like, you shall not test the Lord thy God. But for some reason, with giving, God was like, uh, I want you to actually test me on this. You may not believe me, but if you'll give, I promise you, I will create an open heaven over your life. And we see this. And not only do we see it in our finances, like there's been times where we send teams into Starbucks and we buy a little gift card full of like a couple hundred dollars and we buy a whole line of people coffee. And guess what happens when that happens? The heavens open up. So I want to say that when you, when, sometimes when you give, it's not just opening the heavens so you get more money. It's also opening the heavens over your life to get more of heaven. Can I get anybody to say amen? amen. And, and what happened was I was preaching. I was in the Starbucks and I was, it wasn't even like we were trying to do church. 
But we started buying people coffee, and all of a sudden, me and the leadership got completely drunk, and everybody started getting hammered in Starbucks. Amen. Hammered on the glory of God. Amen. And we started praying for people in Starbucks, praying for your, your, your pain, and then and they were like, check it, check it, and they would check it, and the pain was gone. Yes, and we had church in Starbucks. Yes. And this will really flip all of you out there. Like I boycotted Starbucks because they don't like where they put their money. But you know what? We just used the platform so that souls could come into the kingdom. And the reason they didn't kick us out was because we were being nice to all their customers. <laughs> so and so I'm telling you guys, it was like a revival meeting, and 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 people were getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And this this is this is like. This is what we see. And so I just want to say that giving opens the heavens over your finances, but it can also open the heavens over your family. It can open the heavens over you. Think about the, uh, the story of the cruise of oil that never ran dry. That's an open heaven. And I would not lie to you and say the giving has not worked for my wife and I. <laughs> I'm here to get, get really honest with you that God is broken the chains of debt off our life and literally I, sometimes I want to cry I was weeping the other night because I remember the only job I used to have was mowing a lawn for $30 when we first got married I had one one lawn mowing job and now we've paid our home off and we've paid off debt and we've got a savings for our kids college and God's blessing our ministry and we're debt free and this tent was paid for and everything we do flows from cash flow and I'm just like God you're so good and I, I testify this to you tonight because I want to start believing that it's going to happen in your lives amen so I hope that built your faith up and just believe me as you give tonight it's going to help because Jennifer is going with our with our beautiful team here and, and they're going to be traveling and preaching in more tent revivals this summer and so it's going to be crazy. You should get on our website and follow her, contagiouslovintl.com, so you can find out where those tent revivals are and maybe travel. So if, let's just do this real quick because, man, I feel the glory, and I want you to give into the glory. Have you ever given into the presence of God? Have you ever spoken into the presence of God and seen creative miracles take place just because the presence of God was there? The Bible talks about where Jesus, he did miracles because the presence of God was with him. The power of God was with him and he was there to do miracles. And so we can't separate our money, you know, from the kingdom and say, well, money's evil and God's good. And, you know, let's just be poor. No, God wants to make your money funny. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. And I'm going to believe that you're going to you're going to sow into the glory tonight. and You're going to see immediate fruit. Amen. So I'll tell you just the, the quick ways we can do this. So just make your cash, uh, make your cash out too. Make your, <laughs> make your checks out to CLI. That's Contagious Love International. And we love you for that. We will, we will just send you a tax receipt at the end of the year for that. We thank you. If you want to do by Cash App or Venmo, um, this is how you do it right now. You just pull this thing out right now. <laughs> Amen. Do you guys do Cash App? Anybody here do Cash App? Or uh, do you guys do Venmo? Any Venmoers? Cool. Just open her up. Pop open your Cash App, and then you you search for our our little uh, our uh, handle, which is dollar sign C L I Give. And if you're on Venmo, uh, just look up C L I Give, and you'll find us under business. And so. That's going to help us, guys. Really, we thank we thank God for everything that's come in this this week, and we we can't even tell you thank you enough for what you've done. You guys are literally part of this this harvest together. People that have been saved this weekend, people that are getting delivered from demons this weekend, you get skin in the game too. Amen. That's right. Don't think that you're just giving into an offering and God doesn't see it. He sees it, man. Believe that, okay? And pray over your kids. Pray over your family. Receive the glory that's here over your family. Amen. Receive it over your finances. Amen. I feel drunk up here tonight. Wow. It feels like I've had the new wine. It's real strong tonight, guys. So let's do that. And if you've got cash, I'll, we've got this yellow box up here. We're just going to invite you to come up and give like we always do. So who has their seat? Just stand up. 
Let's all stand up if you've got your seat. And I want to pray over you, and then I'm going to have you come up. If you're sewing by, uh, via online, stand up anyways. Uh, if you're online, I can repeat that again. Cash app and Venmo is CLI Give. PayPal is paypal.me forward slash contagious love. Oh, good. And there's a link on the bottom. So that's all you need to do. Jennifer's got the link in her Facebook Live. Love you guys. Father, I bless. <laughs> Father, I bless this offering tonight. We thank you that the body of Christ is coming together and we're a family giving into revival together, giving into souls together. Amen. And I bless every family here. I bless every person. I bless every single believer in this place. I I bless even if people are back so they're lost, they're gonna they're gonna get a touch from heaven tonight. Amen. So let's come forward and let's give. Amen. And if you need a job, we're going to say, God, bring a job. Amen. And if you need a raise, we're going to believe God to bring a raise. Amen. And if you have an inheritance that's tied up, God, untie that and give them that inheritance. Amen. Come on. If you feel that you're entrepreneurial and you don't know where to start, well, God, give them application to their gifts. Give them quick application to the revelation. Amen. Because there's businesses that are that are literally inside people tonight. And you don't even know the miracles in your house. Do you remember Tommy? Tommy, was it Barnett that said that? He said, the miracles in your house. Some of you are wondering where the money's gonna come from, and you're thinking a tree of money is gonna grow in your field. I'm telling you, it's inside you. My God, I could preach on that tonight, but I'm not gonna. But I want to tell you, there's miracles inside you. There's ideas inside many of you. And you haven't even stepped out to see if they'll turn into businesses or ministries. We're sitting in a home tonight in a field where there are literally ministries being birthed out of this tent revival tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if you get touched in this tent revival. And five years from now, we're going to find out about your ministry. And you're going to be traveling and doing this all over the world. Come on! Because we need a family. We're not here to make fans. We're here to make you leaders. Amen. Enough with the one man show. It's time to get people. Yeah. Amen. Unction in the pews like Leonard Leonard Ravenhill used to say. Thank you for that, Father. Bless everyone. All right. Stand up one more time. I want to honor the glory. I want to honor the presence of God. You know, for far too long, we've not honored the Holy Spirit. Haven't you gotten so fed up with, with churches that just push them to the side? He's trying to move on people and the program shut it down. We want the Holy Ghost in this place. Do you stand and do you honor the third person of the Trinity? Do you know he's God down here? Isn't that awesome? Jesus is in heaven. The Father's in heaven. So if you want God on earth, get the Holy Ghost. Put your hands up into that presence tonight. We need you. God needs you. We, we honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Do you feel that wave come? Some of you guys are going to wake up tomorrow and you're going to say, my God, that 10-year-old pain's gone. My God, that knot that's been there all my life is gone. My God, that tumor shrank. It's gone. My God, that cyst, it's gone. It's leaving in the glory right now. If we're audacious and, and have enough faith tonight, and if we can get you guys having enough faith tonight, we might start getting people to check and see if tumors leave tonight. Amen. How many knows Jesus couldn't do many miracles because of the unbelief? But I don't feel that here tonight. I feel faith. So I know God's about to do something. Tell your neighbor God's about to do something. And if they didn't believe you, look at your other neighbor and say, God's about to do something. And if they didn't believe you, well, then just look at Jesus and say, God's about to do something. I'll get my last sip before it all rolls away. 
Lord, I just thank you for overflow in people's lives tonight. I thank you the river cannot be kept in a box tonight. I thank you it's going to flow. It's going to awaken us like caffeine. It's going to wake us up. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when the Holy Spirit tells any of you, me, even the leaders tonight, if, if the Holy Spirit drops a, a seed in you that has to be planted, you guys tug on me. Come share. All right? So I feel like tonight we can do anything. God can do anything. He can give you guys words of knowledge, anything. We just want God to move. Amen. Before I preach tonight, I just want to honor the presence of God here. Because without the presence of God, our services are nothing, man. Amen? If He doesn't show up, I'm just a guy up here talking and that's boring. Amen? We want Him. <laughs> We want him. Oh, oh, ah, we want him. <laughs> oh, I see God touching someone's stomach. You've been having issues there. Almost like maybe it's like an ulcer. The Lord's touching you right now. I also see it, um, a work related injury that, that uh, you didn't even receive workers comp or whatever that thing's called. And, but God's healing you tonight, and I'm not sure who you are, but you had a work-related injury, and God's going to touch you tonight. And I also see there's uh, 3011, and I'm not sure if that's an address or part of someone's phone number, but God is going to do something, a miracle for you, like uh, in your family, and I see that. I, I, I don't know if it's for someone here or online, but I saw 3011. 3011. And also that, that ulcer that I don't know if it's an ulcer, if it's ulcerative colitis. But there's something going on with digestion that God's healing tonight. And if you need that right now, put your hand on your stomach. Yeah. Right there in the back. Yeah. Right now. Let the finger of God come upon that right now. Drive it out, Lord. I thank you. Every demon has to let him go right now. Thank you for that, God. There's also a woman. Uh, you were in an accident and it caused whiplash. And your neck has always um, never been mobile like it used to be. God's touching you right now. And the presence of God's going to touch you. And, and not even a man's going to touch you, but it's the presence of God's going to touch you. And it hurt your neck and it hurt your spine. Is that online? Okay. Is that someone here too? Is it a woman that got in an accident that got whiplash in it? Or is it online? A woman online said that's me. Okay, so right now the finger of God is touching that woman right now. She's healed. And we will even ask you in the presence of God to stand up and check it and let everyone know on Facebook what just happened. Come on. Amen. Jesus, I thank you. Was there a woman here that was in an accident that hurt your spine and hurt your neck? And it never was mobile like it used to be? Can you just, can you put your hand on your neck right now? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for her life. Father, I also want to thank you that you are, are, uh, are giving, giving her access into, access into heaven. And the Lord says, as you go into Jesus, he's going to start restoring your sleep because the Lord says you, you, you need help sleeping and he's going to restore that. And right now we command every demon of pain to loose that woman right now. And I say, let the fire of the Holy Spirit come inside her and heal her. Thank you for it right now, Jesus. Thank you for it right now, Jesus. Look at that. Look at that glory. 
Can you come up here? Can you come up here? I promise we're going to preach out of the Bible tonight, but I just want to make sure that the Holy Spirit has His way. Amen. Someone say, man, get out of the way. God, get in the way. <laughs> Let God have His way. Thank you, Jesus. Just stand right here. Lord, I thank you for her life. Thank you that you brought her here tonight to experience your joy. Could you take one step forward for me? You need sleep because God's going to give it to you. Is that right? And he's also showing me that there's has been, you know, clouds that come and go, depression, and God's going to begin to lift that off you. And you're not going to have to battle that anymore because God's about to pick you up in his arms and he's about to fight your battles for you. Amen. And he's going to fight your battles for your little ones. And he's already seen your prayers and your tears and he's going to, he's going to cause a revival. Amen. <laughs> You've been praying, haven't you? And I see that young man that's going to come and just lift his hands up and he's going to dance for Jesus. And I even saw him like rapping for Jesus. I saw him doing hip hop for Jesus. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Are you good with that? And, and, and I want you to know, you know, you've stood through a lot of trauma in your life, a lot of abandonment, but the Lord has been by, I'm sorry, the Lord's been by, the Lord's been by your side and he's never left you. But he also wants to say, I'm so proud of you because you've stood through so much and um, not many people would still be serving the Lord today. Not many people would have faith like you have faith today, but you do. And God's really pleased with your faith. Amen. And when you had that whiplash, it almost affected like your shoulder too. And I saw the Lord heal in this part of your back uh, here, the neck, but also here on this left part of your shoulder. Is that right? And then um, sometimes the pain will often radiate in parts of your mid back. And God's also taken that out as well. You feel that sometimes in your mid back. Is that right? And we've never talked, have we? I've never met you. But Jesus knows, right? <laughs> he knows your address. He, uh, he's going to move in your family. And right as I said family, I just saw Christmas lights. And I saw, I saw that you were, start to, you, you, were, you were to begin to declare uh, when you get home to declare Christmas. There's a miracle coming Christmas for my family. I saw Christmas for her. And God's going to do something that you've been believing for for years this Christmas. And I'm always careful to prophesy things like that when it relates to time. But I know that that's what the Lord's saying. Amen. <laughs> and so take one more step towards me. Just lift your hands up. Thank you for that, Lord, right now. Are you feeling the, the presence of the Lord? Isn't that peaceful? Wow. Look at that. Can you do me a favor and just move your neck and see if it feels any more mobile than since when first? What's happening? I feel kind of like a like a cool feeling. Mm -hmm. in we my know neck. that feeling well. Yeah. Yeah, and I can sleep it a lot better than I normally can. And when did this happen? Just when you said something about the neck. Oh, wow. Come on, tonight in the atmosphere. Can you do me a favor? Move like this. And then move all the way. Watch, it got even better as I just told you to do that. 40 years old? And you're telling me that it's more mobile than it was 40 years ago? <laughs> come on Jesus stand here with me did anyone come with you tonight or are you just here you brought oh there you go the glory's on your parents I could see that she prayed for you that's what the Lord told me she got on her knees for you she has fought many battles for you and that's a good mom right there it's a good dad too and she's she's a prayer mama she's a prayer warrior and, and it's just going to, you know, you're going to see the heritage that, that you've walked in hit your grandchildren too. Does that minister to you? 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo! He loves you. Where'd you guys come from? Chattanooga. Wow. Come on, man. You been here the past couple nights, or is this your first night? No. Do you ever have any back pain? Can you check your back right now and see if it's better? That's good. Thank you, Lord, for it. So how much more mobile do you think you are if you're just moving to the side? It's not a lot. I mean, it feels normal. <laughs> Normally, I can't, I can't, like, you know, when I'm driving, it's hard to look side. So when you look to the side, you can't do it? No, I found a lot of pain. Yeah. Was she expecting this tonight? No, Mom? <laughs> Would someone get to your feet and praise Jesus right now? You are? I had forgotten about the injury. I wasn't even thinking about that tonight. Is that a power coming on you? It's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Let me check you. All the way. Does it feel great? <laughs> Let's give God praise one more time. Come on. We love you. Your life is never going to be the same. Amen. Woo! The lady online. The lady online what? Pain is left. From the accident? In Jesus, good. He took care of her too. Come on, Jesus. All the pain left. Don't be surprised if it hits you next. Come on. Hey, I know there's people in here. They're like, I have been prayed for for like ever, and it's never happened. I'm telling you, you could, you, you you're gonna get healed tonight. Amen. Amen. You're gonna get healed tonight. Come on. Whew, come on. Do y'all feel that? Are you feeling this? You know, it's like. Either you either you, you jump all in or you just sit on the sideline and watch it all. But I want to just jump all into the glory of God. I don't want to observe anymore. I don't want to keep conference hopping. I want all that the God, all that God wants to give me of the glory. Amen. Come on. Thank you for that now, Lord. I believe we're going to pray for people at the end tonight. We're going to pray for a lot of people that, you know, need deliverance. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need miracles. Whoa. You like that? <laughs> yeah, he does. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he does. Are there people that need a miracle tonight? Did you? Did, are you believing for God to touch you? Well, then stand up if you are believing for a miracle right now. See, because I was about to preach, and then he was like, no. Flow with the wind, amen? Do you need a miracle in your body? Has it been causing you pain? Have you been taking medicine for it? Do you want to go to the doctor and pay for it? No? Well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to lay your hand on your body right now if you need healing. And in the glory, watch God do it. Watch God touch you in this realm of glory. Watch God touch you right now in this realm of glory. How would y'all act if you got healed right now, for real? Okay, there's one guy jumping. Let me try again. How would you act if God healed you right now? Look, I know tomorrow's Monday, but it doesn't seem like y'all are as excited as uh, you were Friday night. Come on. How would you act if God was about to heal you right now? That sounded good. That sounded like faith. Now keep your hand there. We're going to pray. And I want every believer in here to pray it with me. Every devil, say this after me. Every devil of sickness, 
Every spirit of pain, every spirit of torment, loose the people now, now, now. Look at your neighbor if you're believing for your healing and say, I just got healed. <laughs> just tell him, I just, God just healed me. See, I'm having you prophesy. I'm saying, to, like Jesus said to the man with a withered hand, stretch forth your hand. Well, you can't do that if you have a withered hand. Are y'all feeling me? So why would he say to a man with a withered hand, stretch forth your hand? Because he knew God was going to heal it. So I'm telling you to look at your neighbor and say, I just got healed. Amen. Can you check now? All those that were believing for a miracle, can you start checking? Start checking your body right now and see what just happened. Like this was this way before, but now it feels this way. It wasn't tense before, but now it feels, or it was tense, but now it feels this way. Or, or it wasn't as mobile before, but now it's more mobile now. Try checking it. Come on. And online. If you're believing for a miracle, get up and check your body right now. Unless you're in a car driving. Come on. Anybody anybody feeling different as you've been checking your body tonight? Does anybody feel like the Lord just touched you in the glory realm? Woo! Anybody? Raise your hand. If God just touched you. Do you feel a difference? Come on. Who else? This person back here? Thank you, Lord. Who else? This girl? <laughs> Come on. Look at God. He's already touching people. Come on. Look at her. Who else? Who else? Raise your hand if God's touched you. If he's touching you right now, raise your hand. You feel different? Come on. Can you come up and tell me what just happened? All of you that raised your hand, I want to get you to testify real quick, and then I'm going to preach tonight if the Lord lets me. But quick, quick, quick. Come up here real quick. If you got healed or God just did something, we're just going to have you testify. I'll, I'll interview and you can say what God just did. You don't have to preach or anything. You don't have to feel uncomfortable. If God just touched you, I want you to come up here and tell me what happened. Come on, dude. And then I want you I want you to believe that God's going to still touch you. Because it doesn't end here. Amen? Amen? We've prayed for people and they call us next week sometimes. And they're like, hey, I got healed in your revival. Right. It didn't happen that night, but it happened when I got home. Because right. God, he can do whatever he want. Amen? What happened, bro? I'm not sure what's going on, but I've had indigestion basically for weeks. Having, every time I take a sip or bite food, yeah, it's stress something. Yeah. And uh, you called it out, and I put my hand on my belly. You feel like burning. <laughs> and uh, I feel it stop it. Right? You felt it stop. Come on, dude. <laughs> Let's give God praise for that. Come on, if you'll honor every miracle, He'll do the great ones. Isn't that awesome? What happened for you? Yeah, my shoulder was clicking and now it's gone. You, your shoulder used to click? Yeah, it did. See, I love the evidence. Nope. Used to pop, doesn't pop anymore. Used to click, didn't click. What, what is it doing now? Just smooth, smooth, smooth. And do you know how long? <laughs> Dude, you're awesome. You're, look at the joy on it. Can you see that in your face? How long was it clicking? That's what I'm trying to say. Probably like four, three, four years. I know, y'all. I know, I know. You're like, I, I've seen it before. Praise the Lord. No, man, I'm telling you, praise God and honor every miracle tonight. If you'll, if you'll honor, if you create a place of honor for Jesus, He'll come and do more. I've always seen Him do it. The things that you don't honor, He will not give you. The things that you do honor, He'll give you. Come on. And that's the way to get an impartation on your life. If you believe in healing on another minister and you honor their ministry, boom, watch it happen to you. It's happened to me, man. Come on. So no more after three years, three or four years. Do you know how it started? Um, I think I fell off a horse riding bareback. My God. Okay. Wow. The dark horse of God is coming forth in Jesus' name. Get that Jennifer Martin, baby. Right now, my other Could be, did you need healing there too? I think I used to have fibromyalgia and I got really healed. 
whole spine was affected. So I just felt healing all the time at random times. And I just felt really hot right now. You know, and that could be a word of knowledge for someone else's right shoulder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does anyone have a right shoulder that needs healing? Come on. Go pray for him. Would you do that? Yeah. We're going to put you to work. <laughs> you see that guy that said I do? <laughs> Three or four years of clicking and the clicking's gone. Oh. What happened for you? It's so sweet. Well, I had a uh, vertical, and so I'm very dizzy when I'm walking. So all the time? Yeah. Uh, well, it comes in though, but especially when the rain's coming Yeah. And so I feel that that's straightened out and gone now. You don't feel that dizziness that normally comes? Well, no, it left. I was not able to walk straight to get in, and I did, but it was not straight. Well, God Almighty, dude, does anyone have a straight thing we can just walk straight to that pole and come right back? What's going on? What's going on tonight? Debbie knows. I'll tell you what's going on. It's the glory. You're walking straight. Yes. Dizziness. No. You know it's never going to come back. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And, and and what's so beautiful is if you'll go pray for people, God's going to do it for them too. Oh, that's good because people come to me all the time saying they have a problem, but we don't have any answer. So now I'll tell them. Right? Now you are, right? You're the conduit that Jesus is going to flow through. Because I, you know, a lot of people that come to me knowing that I have that problem, they ask, what can I do? And there's really nothing we can do. My God. So now you can. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand that? Do you understand how this works? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
let the Lord minister to you today, okay? <laughs> All the pain <laughs> That's awesome. Y'all need to praise Jesus. Is this your first night? Or did you come? Has she been here? Uh, 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 I think you Say amen. amen. Come on. What are you guys up here for? Oh my gosh. See, some people get like one, two, three, four, five, six. If God's at work, we just say thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so you just said, you know, hey, is anybody's shoulder hurting? And I was like, yeah. I've, uh, you didn't know this, but yeah, I dislocated my shoulder at least three times in my life. And so my right shoulder, yeah. And so she just came and prayed for me and literally like I had no pain with my shoulder. Hello. Okay, so, so Monday and Jennifer Martin don't only carry the glory, right? Amen. But that girl just prayed for you and you got healed. Right. Can we say the one man show's over? <laughs> this is what we want to see. We want we want you to know that you've got it. You've got it. This old wet blanket theology that I go dry back to God every church service has got to leave your life. Do you understand that Jesus said? Believers shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Your job is not the recovering. Your job is just to lay hands on them. Amen? Cole, you're awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that, buddy. <laughs> Dude, he got so slammed in the glory tonight. We were last night. We were laughing, weren't we? I just I'm gonna lean on this. I don't need you, Aaron. I found the pole. Holy ghost. Yeah, two hours last night, we were drinking in the glory. And we got knocked out by the power of God. Nobody touched us. And so I'm welcoming y'all to stay as long as you guys want. Because there's some angels around here that like to party. And they're going to come and they might even tickle some of y'all. They might push some of y'all over. <laughs> and you might be like, well, if my, my pastor at my church don't talk like that. Well, it's just time to open up your mind for a new paradigm, amen? Because encounters of the Bible are about to become your encounters. I'm tired of textbook Christianity. I want to live what I'm reading, amen? I'm tired of talking about revival. I want to see revival, amen? I got so tired of preachers preaching revival sermons and like quoting all the great revivalists, but you know, like nobody ever gets saved in their church and nobody ever gets healed in their church. It's like, I get tired of people with apostle on their business card and you're like, have you ever seen anyone healed? And they're like, no, but I'm an apostle. It's like, it's time for Jesus to come with a wrecking ball and wreck the order, the hierarchy. And it's time for you, everyday believers, to stand up and rise up. Now, you're going to pray for more people, and you're going to see more people healed in your life. Will you do that? We commission you to the ministry of Jesus Christ tonight. Boom. So, yeah, did we have another? Were you up here? Okay, I was making sure. Is anybody feeling the Holy Ghost? That's important to me. That, that means a lot. Who's feeling the Holy Ghost tonight? Ha, ra, ba. Amen. Meshka. 
Hey, uh, uh, Bosco. Uh, Bri Brianna, come over here. Yeah, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna pray for a few people, and then we're gonna try to preach. And if I can't preach, it's because uh, the God made me mute. Uh, just lift your hands up, and I might need someone just to you know just make sure. Uh, yeah, the rushers just to make sure. Amen. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, mm -hmm. now take one more step forward. That's going to be hard. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Now, Holy Ghost, get her feet. Watch this. He's got your feet. Uh oh, yeah, 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 that's called anointing. And you know what the Lord's doing? He's anointing you for ministry. You know, this is the place where you get anointed with the horn of salvation and he pours his oil out on you. Lord, I thank you that that's for her ministry. I thank you that she's been praying in secret about her ministry. And I thank you that she's been asking you to show her how to start, how to go, how to start, how to create, how to build how to how to how to and god is going to come and put others around you that believe in you and they're going to help you carry that torch and this is the season where god is going to surround you kind of like bridesmaids like i saw jennifer's word from jeremiah johnson remember that and god's going to surround you with a bridesmaid army and they're they're going to see the leadership because god wants you to know you're a leader amen you were never born to follow and that's why you would always question things when you were growing up and that's why you questioned everything because that was part of who you are. You were created to be curious and let God's divine curiosity take you on a divine quest. For I say to you that you shall go around America and you shall be a preacher and you shall carry the deliverance ministry of Jesus to all the broken and you will go into inner city neighborhoods and you will lead teams on the streets and God says don't be shy, step out because I'm going to make you a Deborah and I'm going to cause you to bring judgment against the devil. I'm going to cause you to bring judgment it's payback time all the torment he puts you through in your life it's now payback time and he gets to he gets to be in misery watching you make a fool of him for jesus christ's sake and i say to you tonight you are now coming under the anointing of god you are being commissioned tonight brianna in jesus name and i hear the holy spirit saying don't wait uh and don't keep following uh because leaders are going to Try to put you under, uh, like, uh, they're going to try to, like, put this thing over you and control you. And, and people are going to try to, you know, don't, I hear the Holy Spirit very jealously saying over you tonight with love. Uh, see that no man controls you because I'm putting something inside you right now that has to be literally uh, steps taken quickly because there's a quick harvest that's about to happen in America and he's going to use you to do it. And it's not just Tennessee, it's like neighboring states. You're going to be traveling to Alabama, Kentucky, Indiana. And then fire is going to start spreading as, as, as God begins to promote you and increase you. And so, Lord, I thank you for that for her. Don't you love it when God calls this forth? Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And God even says peace is coming like a river in your sleep, and he's going to start taking you up into the heavens. Because you've been asking to see Jesus and you're going to be an apostle just like the apostles saw Jesus. God says you are going to see Jesus and it will be the, the sign of the apostolic. The, I can't even say it. The apostolic on your life. Apostolic over your life. Apostolic over your life. And the dreams and the tormenting dreams are going to leave. Yep, yep, yep. They've been trying to come back in cycles, but those are going to leave. The nightmares are going to leave. God says they've been trying to come and um, make you make you afraid and make you identify with fear. And that's leaving you tonight. And I would receive that if there's anyone having tormenting dreams in this place right now. The enemy is trying to get you to identify with fear so you'll feel it when you're awake. 
And I cancel those demonic assignments on your life. I cancel every demonic altar that's been placed against you. I cancel every witchcraft curse that's been placed upon you. I cancel every spell that's been spoken over anyone in this place. And I thank you, Lord, for the river of God and the oil of God and the wine of God coming as a sign that tonight you're going to start breaking through in Jesus' name. And that guy right there that has the red shirt, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, says your, your testimony is going to change people's lives you are gonna god's gonna put something inside you tonight and and god sees that there's been brokenness in you and there's things that have happened to you that others would have given up and others would have probably you know left the lord by now but the lord's touching you and he's gonna he's gonna cause you to drink from the river of his spirit he's gonna cause you in the season in your life to help you god says i'm going to help you answer the call of god in your life and I think you've noticed that there is a call of God in your life. And I think you felt that call. But Jesus wants you to know that he loves you. And the Father in heaven wants you to know that he loves you. And I don't know why I'm supposed to say this right now. But God the Father says, I'm your father. And it's time for you to know that. It's time for you to be a son. And you're going to manifest sonship. And you're going to start getting around people. And they're going to feel the presence of God on you. Lay your hand on him. <laughs> Would you mind? Yeah, they're going to feel the presence of God come on you and even the things that the devil tried to do to you even those suicidal thoughts and even those things from your past and even those depression the depression that came those are going to roll away because God's deliverance is coming upon your life and he's going to use you to save your friends and he's going to use you to save the people that you came out of the world with and Lord I thank you that now is his time to shine now is his time to shine now is his time to shine Lord, I thank you for that right now. And uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, there's the joy hitting them. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I get laughing with you, man. Woo! Shit, take Katie Rebe. Does that feel good? Isn't that wonderful? Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you for that. Wow, lift your hands up. Yeah. And Jesus says, you're going to set so many people free from addictions. You better get ready. I see you going and preaching. You're going to preach in rehabs. You're going to preach. You're going to, I even see what I saw on here. You're going to go into inner cities and you're going to preach your testimony. And people are going to get delivered from devils. Amen. People are going to get free from tormenting suicidal thoughts and spirits of depression. And there's also someone else here. Maybe it's a two or three even I, there's been suicidal thoughts coming against someone and i want you to know you're going to leave tonight those things are breaking off those things are breaking off I'm so mad at the devil dude yeah. so mad at what he's been doing to people i just want to say that the devil never should have messed with you he's going to pay for what he did to your life taking long but I just want you guys to experience and encounter the love of Jesus tonight it's a little different tonight than it was yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. how many filled the Holy Ghost yeah 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 God thank you more 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 Michael stand up yeah yeah, 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 just lift your hands up. More, more. <laughs> more, 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 more. There you go. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right there. Yep. And I see, I see you guys training and equipping deliverance ministers. And people are going to watch you guys deliver people from demons. And you're going to see like, you're going to see dozens and dozens of deliverance ministries literally, literally coming out of your loins. And um, God knows you're humble and he knows you'll never take the glory. And I want you to know that God sees that tonight, Michael. He wants you and your wife both to know 
that you do so much in secret that no one knows and because you've read the words of Jesus and you're going to pioneer a grassroots movement of, of deliverance and make it uh, culturally relevant to this generation. And God says, lay hold of social media for I shall do it through TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. I shall do it through Facebook. I shall do it through city to city, state to state. I'm going to use you to build apostolically under your own umbrella and you will create a ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ's deliverance that shall be felt state to state. And you will connect leaders to leaders and you will connect cities to cities. And Lord, I thank you for that. And thank you for that. <laughs> Woo, and thank you for that. And even as a sign, you're touching Michael from something that happened to him as an injury when he was working, and you're healing that injury tonight. I'm not sure what that was, but God's healing you from an injury tonight, and I thank you for that, Lord. Oh, I had to say, oh, look at the glory on him. So this is something that you guys have been praying about, but all of it's going to come to fruition now because you've been feeling the burden to raise up leaders. You've been feeling the burden to raise up disciples. And so God's going to do that with you guys. Amen. Woo! Man, I'm getting drunk up in here. How's your body? Can you check it, Michael? Can you check your body? Your knee was actually hurting from a work-related injury? Right. The pain left your knee? <laughs> what happened to you? your arms then? The elbow got healed? Come on, is it gone? No pain at all? Move it for everyone so they can see you. <laughs> Amen. And that is God's sign of what he's about to do in your life. For you're going to bring healing to the body of Christ. And you're going to connect from city to city. You see how the Lord did that? You see how the elbow connects the arm to the... Yeah. You're going to connect from city to city. My God, I wish anybody in here had some understanding right now. Do you feel that revelation flowing? And honestly, like, I live with this revelation. Like, Jennifer flows in it 24-7 around the clock at our home. It's awesome. So we're going to, I just, I just thank God. Thank you for letting the Holy Spirit move, okay? I know that it took a long time, but thank you because there's people that needed ministry, and if I didn't do that, man, they may have never felt it. So Jesus, we say have the glory. Amen. I want to talk tonight about something that's very important to me, and I think it's going to help many of you. I'm going to get a sip of water real quick. Oh, actually vitamin water. And we're going to get rocking and rolling for the glory of God. So tonight, we're in a revival. And tonight, there could be people under this tent. There could be people watching online. And um, one of the most sobering things that I've been realizing lately, guys, is, you know, the greatest ministry that really needs to happen is, is the ministry to the church. And I, I'm even going to be I'm even going to tread carefully about how I'm about to say the following statement. The greatest need for evangelism is in the churches of America today. <laughs> Now you say, no, I don't believe that Monday. I, you know, I believe once you're in church, you're saved. And I believe if you said the sinner's prayer, you know, then once saved, always saved. Or maybe you've heard that preached from a pulpit where people preached and they said, if you say this prayer, your past, present, and future sins will be forgiven. Well, 
we all know by reading the Bible that that's not biblical. And it's okay to say this tonight because I want to help you guys. The scariest thing on my heart tonight is that Christians are duped to think they're going to get to heaven just because they're a Christian. My friend, there could be people under this tent tonight that don't finish their race well and they fall off. And it scares me if you're not going to make it. And you say, Monday, I didn't come to Revival to hear this kind of message. I want to hear goodness. Well, that's, that's normal. I understand. And that's my, my heart too. We want to hear about the goodness of God. I really do. Amen. But I'm, I'm, I, I know preachers that have fallen off the path of grace. I know preachers that I've walked with, walk, walked with for a decade and they are no longer serving Jesus today and they used to get the fire of the Holy Ghost on their life and they moved in miracles and they did signs and wonders, but they're living in sin today, guys. I want to talk about something that your preacher, maybe your pastor never wants to bring up because he's afraid if he does, he might lose the givers in the church. I want to tell you that there's a disease in America and it's called sin. And I want to tell you that there's an answer for that. And it is the cross and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you that if you really say you believe Jesus, show me the fruit on your tree. Because fruit is going to speak louder than your words. Amen. I want to tell you that I have a friend. His name's Ivan Tuttle. He's in ministry because he got saved because he died and went to hell. And I know you don't want me to talk about hell, but that's something that I need to talk about tonight. Because, quite frankly, some of the greatest evangelists that I've been walking with for years, they never talk about hell anymore. They only preach on angels. They only preach on signs and wonders. They only preach on miracles. They only preach on, you know, your breakthrough. But they never talk about sin. And they never talk about repentance anymore. Uh-oh, now money's starting to go there. But you know why? I need to, because it's going to save some of you guys tonight. Some of you, your house is on fire, and I'm telling you, it's burning, and you don't even know it, because what's happened is you can become so familiar with God, you'll become so familiar with God that you think He excuses the, 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 uh, the sinful things that you do in your life. Now, on the other side of this, there's freedom. Do you hear where I'm going? This isn't scary, hellfire, doomsday. This is actually freedom. And this is freedom from depression. This is freedom from addictions. This is freedom from pain in your bodies. Some of the pain comes as a result of our disobedience to God. And I want to say tonight, I want to bring up some scriptures to you. And I want to help you tonight. Amen. I want you to know you're saved. Amen. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. It's quiet up in this Methodist church. See, when I start talking about sin, it makes everyone uncomfortable. But the good news is, we've got preachers that aren't afraid to talk about it anymore. It's not just everywhere. There's a, there's a good news gospel coming back to the pulpits. You know what it is? We preach deliverance to the captives. Deliverance. Amen. And like I was saying the other night, nothing is going to cause a demon to come in your life more than your rebellion to God. Amen. 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 If you choose to keep doing those things that the Lord is convicting you not to do, you will find oppression in your life. Amen. Now you say, Monday, that's too harsh. No, I love you. And if I love you, I'll tell you the truth, right? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, he who hears my words and puts them into practice, I'll liken to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Are you on the rock? You know how you're there? When you put his words into practice. How many people are reading the Bible and listening to good sermons and they're not doing what Jesus said? You want an honest, you want an honest answer? Probably 80% of the church. I'd say 80% or more of the church read their Bibles, but they never do what Jesus said. And Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the good news to every creature. Amen? Amen. Did you know if you're not actively sharing your testimony and the gospel with people, you're not obeying the words of Jesus? Oh, man, that's that. I better not go there. I'll be easier on you tonight. No, I want to be hard. You know why? Because sometimes God will kick us in the booty so we can get living for him. Yeah. 
Amen. And I'm not afraid to say, spank me, Jesus. And I'm not exempt, man. I'm a minister too. And there's going to be many ministers in the last day. And Jesus even says it, that they're believers. They said, Lord, Lord. Do you guys remember when he said this in the Bible? Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Lord, did we not do de deliverance? Demons, we cast the demons out of your name. Lord, did we not do great things in your name? And what does he say? Oh, I know, I remember. Come on in, you were good. <laughs> no. Or he doesn't say, I know, you went to church every Sunday. No. He says, if they are acting lawless, they're not getting in. Now, I wish I could tell it to you differently. I wish I could give you good psychology, but God's not going to give that to you tonight because Jesus wants obedient servants. Amen? Amen. I want to give you four life hacks tonight that are going to help you. Amen? Amen? We need some life hacks. My God, I feel the power of God. He's ready to deliver you tonight. He's ready to deliver you tonight. Your decisions have footsteps. I want to preach to you tonight. Be careful about the decisions that you're making. And you might even be saying in this place, well, I don't sin anymore. I got delivered from pornography and I got delivered from gambling and I don't do drugs anymore and I don't watch R-rated movies. But if you're in love with money, you're in sin. And if you spend more time thinking about money and how to make money and this and that about money and it's become an idol, guess what? You, I'm telling you, no one wants to hear this message anymore because... We've become too comfortable. And do you know there's Christians that are dying in other nations right now? There's Christians that are dying for their faith in other countries right now. Are you listening? Yeah. Because of their faith. And we've got it good here in America right now. We don't know what true sacrifice really looks like. Amen? Amen. There's people all over Iraq right now that are giving their life for Jesus Christ willingly. So that people can get saved. And I think that we need to wake up in America and realize our nation is falling apart from the seams. I think we need to ask God, why is it falling apart at the seams? And I think God has the answer that judgment begins at the house of God. And I'm saying to you as a minister tonight, there's even areas of my own life that God's been cleaning up lately. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'll be transparent with you guys. There's stuff in my life God's cleaning up. Because He wants holiness. Amen. He wants you to live free. Free from fear. Free from depression. Free from the demonic influences. Let me tell you one thing though. The blood of Jesus is going to come and cleanse you tonight. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost, man. Wow. I feel the Holy Ghost. So let me just say, number one, no sugar daddies. All right? We got too many sugar daddies in the church today. They just want to have one night stands with the Lord and then they want to go live however they want with other lovers. Let me tell you something. There's a scripture and it says this in Matthew 7, 21. And in Matthew 7, 21, Jesus says the most sobering words that we must never forget. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how many church services you've been to. It doesn't matter how many sermons you love. It doesn't matter that your Spotify playlist is full of worship music. If you're living in sin, you're living in sin. Now, I know that the Holy Ghost is anointing this message because I feel his glory tonight. And I know that when I talk about this very subject, it can make people uncomfortable. But I want you to know there's freedom for you. There really is freedom. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for that freedom? In Matthew 7, 21, Jesus says, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. Okay, so you're going to have people in hell that had prophetic ministries. Lord, we casted out demons in your name. Guys, we're going to have people in hell that casted devils out of people. It's quiet again, isn't it? 
my friend Ivan Tuttle that died and went to hell and now has a ministry, he said the number one thing that he could not believe when he got to hell is how many believers were down there burning in the fires of hell. He said that there was preachers in hell that served money and they didn't really care about the people. And when they got there, they realized their judgment was just because they knew they really didn't love the Lord and they really didn't love people in their hearts. Amen. Be careful of the preachers you're listening to. Amen. I need somebody amen and I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's getting so quiet. I need a little encouragement. No, really. We casted out demons. We prophesied in your name, but I never knew you. Remember I said no more sugar daddies? No more one night stands? The absence of obedience is the presence of damnation. I want you to know that Jesus is serious. Not only does he love you, but he wants us to show that we love him. And he says, those that love me obey my teachings. I wish that I could get every person in the body of Christ to hear this message. Because it's one of the most important things. The anointing can operate in people's ministries and yet they can still not be saved. God will still move and miracles can still happen through people. But if their lives are not worthy of to the call, they can still lose their salvation. Once saved, always saved is one of the best kept secrets and lies of hell. I want you to know that you can leave this place ready to obey again. Amen? I want you to understand the life hack too. The door only opens to the clean. In Jesus, in Jesus, in Luke 13, 28, we see Jesus addressing believers. We see Jesus addressing people. And he says, when the master of the house comes and closes the door, then there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For you will see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you will be thrown out. Another thing that I saw, Ivan tell me that I couldn't, I could not get out of my, my mind was there was people in hell and that the reason where they were there is because they chose not to forgive somebody. And that's how quick life is, my friends. It's very fragile. We always feel like we're immortal, but guys, you could go whenever the Lord says you can go. My mom died in 2015 of a heart attack and she went quick. The heart attack and she was gone. Thank God she was serving Jesus. You know what? When she died, she was preaching to my son. Isn't that awesome? Are we going to finish our race well? When that woman died, she died conquering alcoholism. For three years, she lived clean before the Lord Jesus Christ. And she started going to AA meetings and preaching that the higher power is not your big toe or your refrigerator, but the, the higher power is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And I cheer her on in the great cloud of witness today. Mom, good job. You finished well. Friends, if you dance with darkness... You'll court hell to your grave. I want to say that there is a joker in the crowd. There is a smile in the dark. You would not believe how many demons tell my wife as they're coming out of people that they are there to try to make that person fall. Those demons try to come and oppress and possess believers in Jesus because they want to do one thing, get them to live in unrepented sin. And there's people that are listening to me tonight under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And God is telling you, if you don't get clean, 
you better hurry because you don't know when your last breath is. And God is creating a dividing line in the body of Christ now. And he's saying, either get on my side or, or, or don't get on my side or get on the devil's side. There is no gray areas anymore, man. And I'm carrying this message. I'm carrying this message. You know what? I can tell you guys that I failed as a minister. And I've been opening up my testimony more. But do you know that I was so tormented with a spirit of fear from being abused as a child. And I never could loose, I never could get loose from it. But even as a minister, I began to take a prescription drug. And my body got addicted to it. And for eight years, I took one pill every day and my body couldn't live without it. And people wouldn't know that because I, I had a ministry. They thought I was all good, and, but I wasn't. I was broken on the inside. I was given altar calls and I didn't even think I was saved. You know why I'm sharing that with you tonight? Because I'm telling you anybody can fall. Anybody can fall from any level. Anybody can fall. Amen. So the life hack too that I want you to know. Life hack one. Have relationship through obedience. Amen. That is number one to Jesus. You know he cursed the fig tree because it wasn't bearing fruit. Don't think that you're exempt just because you go to church, guys. Don Finto used to tell me one of the greatest things I learned from him, the pastor of Belmont Church, it was a church that got hit by revival in the 70s. A church of Christ. And the Lord moved. And the Jesus movement affected them. And hippies were getting saved. And they had a charismatic outpouring. And he's still serving Jesus today. He's in his 90s and he's still walking with God. And he's still a friend of God. And he's still a friend of Israel, man. It used to say, finish well. Keith Green used to say it. If it's not good enough that you're serving Jesus today, it's the end of the race that matters. I would want you to live every day that you see that finish line and you see Jesus there and he's cheering you on. He doesn't want darkness into heaven. He wants fruit. He planted the seed of his body and he wants fruit. He wants to bring sons and daughters to his father. The, the people that got railed on the most were the ones with religious spirits. Jesus was like, you think you know God? Your father's the devil. You brood of vipers. Do you know, my wife and I, you wouldn't believe how many so-called believers curse us and say the most vicious things, videos about us, because they're so full of religion that they've lost their love. And do you know it's very possible for a person to think they're saved all their life and get to the door and it closes on the guys. Does that not scare us? Like I feel I feel the conviction on my own life. No one's exempt. No one. And the, the worst thing is that my friend Ivan saw people that had powerful ministries and they were burning in hell. I know we don't want to talk about this stuff, but it's true. Their motives were wrong. They served money. They loved themselves. They tarried a little too long at the wine press. They drank and no one knew it, man. A little too much. Guys, I'm serious. Before Jesus comes back, you have to be ready. Because He said in His Word, I'm going to come in an hour that no man knows. Why? Because He wants to find His lovers. That's why He said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? How is faith best activated? Through obedience. Jesus said, believe in me. The amplified version of that means cling to me. If you truly believe Jesus, you're going to cling to Him. You're going to follow Him. You're going to do whatever He says, man. 
And you're going to stop the bitterness towards that person that wounded you. You're going to stop the bitterness and you're going to treat that person that wounded you differently when they get around you. If you get around someone and you can't stand to be around them, there's something wrong. Figure out how to forgive them so that you don't have to suffer. I had a friend that was filled with jealousy at my wife and I when we first launched out in the ministry. And he was tormenting us through his deeds and through his actions. And God told me to give my car to him. And when I did, it broke. Because I was like, I'm not living with unforgiveness. Not, not with my best friend that I got saved with off the streets. And when we sewed that car, it broke and we were like friends again. I'm telling you, sometimes you are called by God to break the chains. How many knows Jesus went to the cross for sins he didn't have to go, go for? There's nothing like love. I always remember that when Bob Jones also died of a heart attack, he stood before Jesus and Jesus asked every single person in the line before him, did you learn how to love? He died in 1975 and came back from the dead and went to heaven. And he saw, and this, this, is, this is so scary. I want to share it with you and many of you may go home and not believe it. That's, that's up to you. But he saw people going to hell forever. And he said it was like the roller at a grocery store and there were thousands of people on it. And he looked at that, he looked at that, that line of judgment and, and people were just rolling into hell. And they saw Jesus as they were going to hell and they knew, oh my God, that person that told me about him was right. I should have listened. And they knew, oh my God, I knew God was telling me not to listen to those people or watch that pornography, but I didn't listen. I just kept doing it and I had a heart attack and died. Dude, it's scary, isn't it? I'm trying to make this as simple as possible tonight so a young person can understand it and an old person can understand it. My friend Jesus is Lord. He's wonderful. He fills me with pleasure every day. I get drunk in his spirit all the time, but I know one thing. He's serious. He's serious about obedience. And when Bob Jones asked the Lord about these people that were going to die and go to hell, Jesus said, that's 90% of the world's population. Actually, it was 98. I just got my fact wrong. He goes, that's 98% of the world's population. You say, Monday, how could you believe that? God's a good God. He is, and that's why he can't let darkness into heaven. He hated sin so much, he was willing to become a human being for, for us to take our sins on the cross. My God, would anyone preach on that again? Come on. Where are the ones that will warn people because they love them? Amen? Amen. So the app, I want to say life hack number three, the absence of forgiveness is the presence of damnation. Matthew 6, 14, if you do not forgive men their sins, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your sins. I know there's people that have wounded you. I know there's people that abused you. I got abused when I was little. I know what that's like. But I can tell you one thing. Jesus still loves those people that abused you. Jesus still loves those people. And as hard as it was, God's going to put a seed of love in your heart for them. Yeah. That's what the Lord told me to do with my mom. Even in my 20s when she would drink and come in the room, that same demon would try to start speaking. God told me every time, will you just keep showing her love? Will you keep blessing her? Will you keep buying her things? Will you keep showing her love? Will you keep praying for her? And that's what I did, man. You don't have to live with those wounds anymore. Be the hero for someone else because they were also broken. They were also broken. And that fourth life hack is finish the race well. Your decisions have the feet. People don't realize this, but when Jesus told Bob Jones, 
the 98% of the world's population in 90, 1975 was going to hell, it's very biblical. Because Jesus himself said in his word, broad is the way to destruction and many choose it, but narrow is the way to life and few there be that find it. If you're going to a basket of apples and you grab a few, do you grab 50 of them? No, you grab like two or three. My burden as an evangelist is I wish the whole world could be saved, but I know one thing. Many are called, but few are chosen. And I'm going to draw a line in the sand tonight. I don't care if this is the last sermon I preach. I, I hope... I hope that I always preach every sermon from now on like it's the last sermon I'll preach, but I'm crossing the line in the sand. And tonight I'm going to invite you to cross over that line if you're tired of playing patty cake with religion. Some of you have been serving a fake Jesus. It's time to serve the real Jesus. Some of you have been in churches where they're not really serving a real Jesus. They've made a Jesus that makes their ears tickle. That's made their pocketbooks fat while souls in their city die and go to hell. Listen, you can be free. Amen? It's the end of the race that matters. I want you to know Jesus is there. He's at the finish line and he's got his arms wide open. He's like, I cannot wait for you to get here. I cannot wait for you to meet my father. In fact, that's the first thing he's going to do with you when you go to heaven. He's going to take you and he's going to introduce you to the father God. Come on. It's time to obey Jesus. Amen. Some of us, we even do good deeds and we want to go tell everyone what we're doing because we, we have pride and we just want recognition. But some of the things you're doing, man, God wants you to do it in secret. He doesn't want you telling anybody about it. He said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Sometimes the Lord is so intimate, He wants those little things that you do for Him to remain a secret only between you and Him because He's a friend. And God called Abraham a friend. And Jesus said to His disciples, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. How many wants to be a friend of God? There's the most powerful being in the universe tonight. He's always been. He always will be. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His name's Jesus Christ the righteous. He's the most famous person in heaven. He's the most famous person in hell. And he wants to be your friend. You can have the ecstasy of eternal life. Do you realize when you get up there, you're going to know you missed hell? Can you imagine how thankful we're going to be forever? It says that in the Bible that Abraham could see hell. We're all going to be able to see it when we're up there. And we're all going to thank God for sending Jesus. We all deserve to go there. God is so holy, He's so loving, and we opened the door to sin by being born. We were all born in sin, but we got to get God's seed in us. It's time for God's seed to impregnate you so your fruit tree looks good again. Woo! The Bible says in 1 John that if you have God's seed in you, you can't go on sinning because you've been born of God. You're so addicted to the glory, the presence of God, the Word of God, that you don't want to offend this Holy Spirit that's here with you, walking you through your life. Come on. It's time to shake ourselves loose. I feel that deliverance anointing beginning to fall right now. Amen. Lift your hands up. Father, right now, thank you for your glory touching. We thank you for that deliverance anointing. We thank you that no person leaves in chains. 
<laughs> no person leaves in chains. No person leaves in chains tonight. And guys, I have to pre I have to preach this message. And it, it, it is actually so hard to preach it that it almost sounds like, man, that guy can't even preach a good sermon. But that's how hard it is. I'm fighting for your soul. Now, if you want to cross this line, and if you're tired of playing patty cake, I just want to make a line tonight in the sand. I want to make a line in the sand. And if you know you've got hidden sin in your life, if you know you've got unforgiveness in your life, I want you to say, it's time to get free. And I want you to know Jesus is standing here tonight and he's saying, will you come? Will you be on my side? Come on, if you want to be on the side of the Lord, I want you to get up out of your seat right now and I want you to cross over that line. If you know that there's stuff in your life God's dealing with and you can't seem to let it go, I want you to know He can deliver you from that. Woo! Yeah, right now, could you guys just stand for me? Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your glory right now, convicting every heart. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to come forward if you want to get free. And this crowd's going to cheer you on. No one's going to blame you. No one's going to point fingers. If you have sin in your life, I want you to come up here and cross this line. Are you going to be on God's side? If you know there's people in your life that you haven't forgiven, I want you to come forward tonight and cross this line. Amen? God's going to set you free tonight. Come on, man. That's what I'm talking about. Who's on God's side? Come on. Who wants to get free? Come on, let's give them a hand clap as they're coming up. There's people here tonight, God's asking you to stop drinking and stop smoking those cigarettes. He wants you free from those addictions. I'm telling you, get up here. He wants you free. He's going to help you forgive that spouse. He's going to help you forgive that person that abused you when you were little. Just come on up. If you want to be free, don't miss this opportunity. Because there may not be another one. No one's promised tomorrow, man. No one's promised tomorrow. No one's promised tomorrow. So I'm going to count to three and we're going to close the altar call tonight. I want to welcome anyone tonight to get right with God and I want to welcome you to get filled with the Holy Spirit and I want to welcome you to get water baptized tonight. Come on. Last thing I want to say, Jesus is coming. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is coming. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is coming. I'm going to tell you the words that no church wants to hear. Jesus is coming. I'm going to tell you the words that only a few people in one church down the road want to hear out of a million. Jesus is coming. I want to say it again. I'm blowing a shofar tonight in the spirit. Jesus Christ is coming back. When I was 15 years old, I was, a, I was a crazy punk rocker drug addict. And I would have dreams because my parents were praying for me. And I was, I was praying for people and chains were coming off of them. And I was preaching the gospel to them. And I would wake up the next day and I would say, God, leave me alone. I don't want to do that. But he would keep giving me dreams. And I would touch someone and chains would fall off their body. Friend, tonight... He was showing me you. He was showing me you guys. I'm telling you, there are chains on you. If you're in unforgiveness, if you're in sin, and God is going to break them tonight. Amen. My God. 
So I'm going to count to three. And if you know that you need to get up here, if you know God's dealing with you, not every eye closed, amen? Because Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before God and before all the holy angels. The most powerful being in the entire universe, so full of love and mercy, is about to brag about you in front of all the angels of heaven. I don't think that's hard to make a little step up to an altar. One, no one's promised tomorrow. Do it tonight. Two, you know you're a lukewarm Christian. I want to invite the lukewarm Christians up. God said in Revelation that if you're, I want you cold or hot, I would either have you cold or hot. But if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Be cold, be icy cold, or be hot, but stop being a statistic in the church today. Get up here if you're lukewarm, man. This is, I'm telling you, God wants to do this. He'll do it for you. And if you'll humble yourself in the sight of God, He will start to lift you up, man. Three, that's it. Anyone else that wants to come get saved tonight, that wants to get free from lukewarmness, come up. Then the last thing I want to say, if you know you have unforgiveness towards someone, God's going to set you free from that unforgiveness. There is nothing that will stop you from entering heaven quicker than unforgiveness. If you know there's people you have not forgiven, I need you up here tonight with me. I want to tell you, as being one who is sexually molested, it is possible to forgive your sexual molester. As being one who is physically and verbally and mentally abused by a demon through an alcoholic, I can tell you it's possible to forgive that person. <laughs> So if you have it in your heart tonight, just come up here. Give it to God. If there's someone you know you haven't forgiven, come up here and give it to God. He's going to help you. He's going to set you free tonight. I can feel the burden of the Lord. Amen. Now all the rest of you, if you're not coming up, just get fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight, okay? Because He's here. He's about to break out in this place with power. Amen. Now, here's the thing about the sinner's prayer. I know it's a little controversial. I don't think it's what saves you. Jesus never said a prayer of faith or a salvation prayer will save you. I believe the end of the finish line is, is, is the fruit. <laughs> the proof is in the end. I want you to dedicate your whole life to Jesus and stop living in the compromise. Friend, we are in a world where the devil's pull is so strong. He will he will seduce you. He will so so cleverly, and he's been doing this for millenniums. He knows how to seduce people. He knows how to get you comfortable in sin. And you can even be in the presence of God and still not be saved. Do you know Ivan Tuttle? He told me when he went to hell, he had been filled with the Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor that's scary. Did you know he was in ministry school? And you know why he went to hell? He left the ministry and started smoking weed again. I'm about to preach to people watching online or maybe even here tonight. Stop saying weed's okay. It's not okay. Some people, are, they got this demonic doctrine going around today. It's like, oh, the anointing oil had, you know, hemp seed oil in it. And yeah, God gave it to us so we could get high. No, man. I have a friend that went to hell. And he was going to go to hell forever just because he started smoking pot. Be careful what you're letting into your life and be careful who you're letting speak into your life. Amen. Do you know why he escaped hell? He said the demons were about to put him in a prison cell. And he said all of a sudden he heard a voice over him say, let him go. I made a promise to his mother. That he was he, <laughs> that he would be saved. And the dude is saved today. He's preaching the gospel all over America right now. Because his mom said, God, you're gonna promise me that my children are gonna be saved. And God said, Okay, I'll take you up on that. Amen. Isn't he a good God? Yeah, yeah. Woo! 
So let's 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 make this very clear. We're about to make a statement of faith tonight, but I only believe this statement of faith is just a platform for your new life. Okay? It's a springboard. So let's just say it. Let's say Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to serve you. No more lukewarmness. No more backsliddenness. No more. No more. Now say, Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Now just let your shimbam broba. Just, yeah. <laughs> just let go. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. More, more, more. More on her. Yeah. More fire. There you go. There you go. Might need some help up here. There you go. There you go. Phil. You feel that? Phil. Anybody on the prayer team, feel free to come if you guys want, or you can rest. There's no pressure. Phil? Phil? guys in the back, lift up your hands. The fire of God's about to fill you guys. Come on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Someone could pray for her, I think. More, 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 Lord, inject him with some Jesus juice. Thank you for that right now. This lady up here, come, come, yes, you, quick, you, yes, 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 yes. If you need deliverance tonight, get up here, man. The devil's in trouble. Look at that, on there. look at that. Yeah, take, take one more, man, one more step if you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the girl that got healed, get up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. More. Some of you are going to start feeling a little dizzy standing up here, and that's normal. I just want you to know that dizziness is normal. Oh, no, I'm going to So just kind of go with it. It makes you feel like this. It makes you want to dance. Really nice. You don't have to pretend to be an experienced church sitter. Go with the anointing. Go with the glory tonight. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It's like the river all over you. Yes. You feeling that? God. Where's that girl that got healed? Get up here. Lift your hands up. <laughs> Where are the wives? Come on, man. Getting real hot. Getting hot. Drunk tonight, and then go home. What's your favorite snack, man? Reese's. Yeah, eat some Reese's with Jesus. Take a step up here. Whoa, yeah, there you go, right in it. Just right there. There it is. You got the yeah, tons of Yeah. 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 Uh, and then an angel just came and grabbed you by the ankles, and that's normal. So we will just let that uh, minister to her right now. Your friend, uh, you come too. Yeah, stand up here next to her. You feel that fire in your feet? Yeah, it's thought so. Is it burning? Burning? Hot coals in your feet. Yeah, that's the shoes of peace. Lord, thank you for the shoes of peace. Those that are watching online, some of you are going to feel the fire and touch your feet. Step forward. Oh, yeah, stop right there. 
There you go. See, I told you. Warm. Now some of you are starting to feel it maybe in your seeds. But if you come up here, it's going to get drunker. I know I'm putting you on the spot. But the Lord wants you to come up here so you can get a double dose. You can't overdose in the Holy Ghost. you got to get a double dose. Listen, I'm telling you, this is real, guys. God created pleasure. The devil's got drugs, and he's trying to do the counterfeit. No, God created pleasure. God created bliss. And God's going to hit you with bliss bombs tonight. And I'm about to launch some missiles at some of y'all tonight. Look at that glory on that guy over there. That guy is so high out of his skull. Look at that guy on the ground. <laughs> Look at that. And, and the Lord says to you, this is the rest that you're going to walk in from now on. And all anxiety is leaving. Amen. That's good for her. She needed to hear that. This stress is leaving. Because when you're, I felt like when you were young, you had some pretty heavy responsibilities on you, on your shoulders. Is that right? You had responsibilities you had to carry when you were young. Is that right? And the Holy Spirit knew that. And as a sign, he's about to mantle your shoulders with the yoke that's easy. And you're going to feel it come on you. There it goes right there. That's the easy yoke. You know what's crazy is the, the most powerful being in the universe is humble. He's like, learn of me, man. I'm meek in spirit. He's humble. There's no, there's no pride in our God. He's humble. He gets on our level. Come on. I put your hand on your heart. God's healing you. Your heart. Thank you for that. More. Amen. That's good, Lord. We'll take more. It, what are you doing? Get up here. Yes, you stand up here. Fire. Pick her back up, too. This lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you standing over here? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Get this lady, guys. I need my drunk ushers. I get so drunk I can't see straight. Get her. Pick her back up for me, somebody. I get, I get double vision. <laughs> you start seeing one vision, then you start seeing two visions, and three visions, and four visions, and five visions. <laughs> Pick this girl back up. Where? Pick this girl back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stand behind her just in case. Wing, bum, blingy, dingy, do. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's good. Fire! Does any young kids want to feel this? Any of you young kids want to feel it? Oh, Uncle Monday. Uncle Jesus. Hey. How y'all doing? Y'all hanging out in the glory? Would you like to feel the love of Jesus touch you? Come on, man. Pick that lady back up. I'm coming right back. Pick that lady back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay right there. This is the Lord's blessing her. Because, like, she's got to take this back to where she's going. You know, this wine that's been here this weekend is exportable wine. 
Y'all are going to be surprised when you drive back to your state how much God touches your city, your church. Come up here. And if your church tries to shut it down, just keep going. Just let the Holy Ghost flow. Just let... Ooh. Yeah, there's that angel behind her. You see that? The golden oil just pouring. Yep. Drip, 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 drip. There you go. There is... There's more, there's more, there's more. Yeah. What do your feet feel like right now? Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Put your hand on your belly. Now, if you want it, you don't have to like let me pray for you. There's people all over the ground right now. Just go lay down next to somebody on the ground. There's no structure here. You guys ready? Father, I thank you for blessing this generation. Thank you for Holy Spirit flame. Thank you for Thomas. Thank you for visitations and the unique visions. Thank you for prophesying. Your young people will prophesy. You guys are actually going to start prophesying the future. Come on, bring that girl up here if she wants to come. Y'all are going to start prophesying the future. You're going to start dreaming future events. kids do something prophetic for me will you will you kneel to the ground will you kneel before the lord with me see that those that humble themselves shall be lifted up jesus said if you will humble yourself as a little child the kingdom of god is yours <laughs> oh and Lord, tonight, let your glory set us free from all man-pleasing. Let your glory come and set us free from all pride. Right now, if there's anyone in here that feels like sometimes you're ashamed of the Holy Spirit, I just, I just set you free from that tonight, right now. You know, I've never really prayed that over anyone in a meeting, but God, God, just lift your hands if you want that. If you want to stop being ashamed of the Holy Spirit, just admit it tonight and just take freedom. Amen. Let him move. <laughs> Let him move. If he gets you drunk in public, man, start praying for your waitress. Start praying for her back to be healed. Come on. See, we've got the party, man. The people are out there partying tonight because they don't know where the true party is. On, Lift up your hands and take a drink right now. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to have all you do that. Get a big barrel out, and you're going to ask the, the God of glory to fill up your barrel. Come on, get out, get out, your, get out your wine barrel. I'm going to have you say something, all right? And I really appreciate all your childlikeness. Listen, the Holy Spirit is really like a child. So when you get childlike, he gets he loves it, man. He has such a fun time. All right, hold your barrel out if you want to drink of heaven. All right, say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fill on my barrel. <laughs> now drink. <laughs> now lay your hands on your neighbor. Yeah, take some, neighbor. Take some. Yeah, drink, 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 drink. There you go. There you go. Now you kids, lay hands on each other. Say, take it. Say, take it. Tell your friend, take it, man. Come on. No cap. Take it. Take it. All right, get your barrel out again. Y'all ready? Say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fill up my barrel. All right, now put your head in it.
This, this hit me one time when I was in a library and people were working on their computers and I looked over at the man across from me and I said, do you feel the goodness of God in this place? He was like, yes! I don't know what it is, but I feel good! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Drink in public. Drink Holy Ghost in public. Stop worrying about what people think about you. All right, now take one more drink. Go, 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 go. Now look at your neighbor and stare him in the eyeballs and say, take a drink. Oh my God. Now slap him over the head and watch him fall. No, I'm kidding. Who's going to drive me home? Put your hand on your neighbor. Now, whoa, help me in the name of Jesus. Get your, um, thanks. Can you hold me? Uh, get your neighbor in a headlock. And give him a noogie. No, I'm just kidding. Get your neighbor in a headlock. Now, tilt your head back with him. <sighs> now, take your body and go like this. Whoa. I keep doing that way. This is fun. Whoa. Do y'all feel that? Whoa. Are you guys feeling this? It feels water. It's like waves. Whoa. Trish, what are you doing? Get up here right now. Trish, get up here right now. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing standing over there? I gotta pray for you guys. Yes. Yeah, Whoa. Yeah, right here. Now y'all put your fingers up in the air like this. Your little antennas. And start drinking. Say like, more, Lord. More, Lord. <laughs> yeah, Lord, right now. <sighs> you too, yeah, stand right here. Yeah, right here. Lift your hands up. There we go, baby girl. You stand, stand right here. Andrew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> guy right there with the ball cap. Stand over here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You feeling that? Training. Encounters training. ET. Phone home. Encounters training. ET. Phone home. 
E.T. phone home, E.T. phone home, E.T. phone home, E.T. phone home, E.T. phone home. Phone home, E.T. phone home, E.T. phone home. Encounters training. We're teaching you to encounter God tonight. Yay, yo, yo, yippee, yo, hi, yay. Yeah, Shayatana, Se Broste, Sasha Stosta, Reiko So So So, and this just started, man. I mean, you just wait about an hour from now, and y'all will be able to drive home. Amen. Give it to him, Jesus. So, there you go. That's how you take it in. Don't stop at the stop sign. Go to the yield sign. E.T. Phone. Phone home. Get this girl. Get over here. Stand right now. We need to get her full of ghost tonight. Are y'all having fun? Yes. Don't let me have all the fun. God. <laughs> There's the peace of the Lord. There it is. The Holy Spirit wants you to know that you and your husband are going to be multi-millionaires. Not because you love money, but because you love and learn. And I see you guys, and this may even be in the future, but you're going to begin to flip homes. You're going to buy them low and sell them high. And I literally see like real estate glory on you guys. And I literally see like prophetic investing. And the Lord did this to me. He actually told me stocks to buy and mutual funds to buy, and they skyrocketed. And I'm going to release this over you and your husband. Because you are going to carry on the heritage of your... <laughs> I see so many coming around you saying, Madre, 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 and you find them homes. You find them love. You find them parents. Isn't that sweet? Give it to her, Jesus. Touch your neighbor real quick and say, take a drink. Take a drink of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> say, he's the only God we got down here. We need this. We need him. <laughs> right? Yes. He's the only God we got down here. Amen. Jesus is in heaven. Right? Right. <laughs> the Father's in heaven, right? Right. So why are we falling in love with the Holy Ghost? <laughs> we need him to get through this crazy life we're living down here on this crazy planet. Yes. E.T. Encounters training. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. And every devil under the sound of my voice, you can't hide. Loose in Jesus' name. Wherever you're hiding, you're coming out tonight. No more hiding. Say it. No more hiding. Get up here. What are you doing? Lift up your hands. Uh -huh. Take one more step towards you. There it is. You feel that it just sat on you. <laughs> Put your hand on your belly. Fire. I thank you for that. Thank you for that right now. Get John up here. 
We love you, dude. Come stand right here. Hey, there he is. Everybody say, there he is. Father, I thank you for his life. No one gets to come and serve under this ministry and not get blessed. Father, I want to thank you right now that there's intertwinings happening right now through relationships. And I literally see that there's going to be people that, you know, would normally pay like top dollar and spend all kinds of money for consultation. God's about to surround you with, with a company of men with like-minded hearts and uh, entrepreneurial. And this is literally, I feel like the Holy Spirit just showed me like, you know, some are called the ministry, some are called the ministry in business. And I saw the Lord causing you to raise up entrepreneurs for His glory. <laughs> and the Lord thanks you because this, you know, this is something like, this is something Jesus actually thought was funny. And he played a joke on his disciples, and they, they were like, man, we don't have money. So he's like, well, all right, I got a good idea. Go go take some fishing line and go the first catch you get, uh, you get uh, there's going to be gold in his mouth, and just use that to pay our taxes. You know, if, if that doesn't sound weird to you, then like, you know, that's just, say that's funny money. Honestly, that's funny money, right? And so God, God, takes pleasure in blessing and blessing and so i just want you to know that that you have within your loins the ability to unlock people's destiny uh that don't even believe in themselves and you're literally you're a good father <laughs> the lord wants you to know you're a good father but he's gonna he's gonna use that because that's actually a weapon in your arsenal and you are going to father I see even people with orphan spirits and you're going to father them to become millionaires <laughs> so the Lord just wanted to say that over you tonight and you'll know like 10 years from now what I'm talking about because you'll you'll get around someone you're discipling and they, they're going to create like things that like become like patents <laughs> and business ideas and witty inventions and Rachel, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, uh, can I lay hands on you? The brilliance of your mind is about to be touched with heaven. And I, I actually saw you writing policies. And this is sounds, because it's probably going to sound crazy, but the Lord is literally going to connect you with people and you're going to help write policies that will actually be signed into law to protect and God's going to cause the protecting mama anointing that's on your life to affect regions. And you say, Lord, that sounds too big and too good to be true. And he said, oh, yeah, watch. When you write policies, I'm going to literally turn them into laws. I'm going to give you and Leon governmental favor in places where the devil's been stealing from people. In government, places where... It, demons are possessing people in government they're going to get delivered and set free by your stories and literally you're going to start seeing laws made and you say lord i can't do this i'm not a lawyer and he says oh don't worry i'll bring you the people that you're to write the policies for thank you for that lift your hands up you're getting it yeah lift your hands up more come on take a step over here yeah 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 <laughs> Woo! I'm going to hold on to the pole, okay? More! You guys, say more! More, Jesus! <laughs> Amen. I think we lost Trish. Me and Kaola are going to think later, like, how can you go from such a serious message to having a party? Like, that's God, man. That had to be a divine intervention from God today. Like, I thought we were going to be up here crying. Get up here. Yeah, lift your hands up right now.
Yeah, he sees that a bit. Oh my god, you're a soul winner. You're gonna... Your job is to win souls. You better believe it. You better get out there and start winning souls. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bubble up, bubble up, bubble up, bubble up, bubble up, bubble up, bubble up. There you go. Release that language to the Lord. Roca, Zatro. There you go. Did Jennifer or anybody, I, I feel like I'm hogging the mic, did anybody want to say anything tonight? Or, I can't stand up hardly, so I got the pole. Uh, oh, oh, okay, if you've been delivered tonight, if you've gone through deliverance, we want you to get baptized if you're willing, okay, and I... And recommitting, yeah, if you recommitted your life to Jesus tonight, we want you to consider baptism. If you need healing in your body, consider baptism. People get healed sometimes when they get dunked. And I'm going to tell you, it's it's almost the most powerful uh, part of the service. Water baptisms. So if you need that, go get it. Amen. Get dunked. Uh, right now, as a matter of fact. So we'll have the baptism there. And um, y'all that can't get off the floor right now. Ain't no problem. Y'all just stay around. I was going to say one thing to the Lord. All of you guys are here as a witness of my testimony to the Lord. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything from the beginning that you started. On April 22nd, 2021, thank you for every moment that you've touched someone that's broken. Thank you for every person that you touched their heart and healed them. Thank you for every person that you caused them to come alive in Christ. Thank you for every sin that you've forgiven. Thank you for every life that you've turned around. Thank you for every sickness that is left. Thank you for every healing that has happened. Thank you for every body you healed. Thank you for every deliverance that you've done. Thank you for every single demon, Holy Ghost, that you cast out by the power of your love to see your children free, Lord. Thank you, God, for opening doors for us to bring the gospel message into many churches and many tent revivals across America. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we say yes, Lord, to everything you want, God. We don't ask you to slow down. We're ready to jump on the train, God. We're ready to jump on the glory train of revival across America and across the world. God, we're ready, Lord. We are ready, Lord. We are ready. We want to live for you, Lord. We want to love you, Jesus. And we want to show you, Lord, that we want to give you the reward of your suffering. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. And we bless your holy name. Amen. sense to follow the fire sometimes. You don't know what to do. And when you follow the fire, sometimes it makes a little love. It's a life you can really What happens for that lady, though? <laughs> so, uh, a couple that I that I met Thursday night, I saw them leaving, so I walked over there just to say bye to them. She didn't even say bye. She turned and said, God just healed my brain tumor. And so I said, what are you talking about? And she said, she said, for about 15 years, I've had this brain tumor. I've been losing my vision. I've had headaches and so forth. So Sean and I were, you know, we're, we're chatting. And I said, listen to this. So I said, I said, I was in a pastor's meeting this morning before service. And one of the lead pastors, we were just sharing what the Lord was going to do today. And he said, I just got a word that the Lord was going to heal a brain tumor today and so i just released that word she said her vision got better her vision got better her her the pain is gone and everything I, I i don't know when it happened it happened tonight i just walked over to say hi to her and bye to her she said god heal my brain tumor so i gave her that confirming word y'all god is so good man hey <laughs> <laughs> and what else? 
<laughs> and <laughs> look at your neighbor say woo. And uh, Debbie, thank you. It was glorious tonight. Just stretch your hands. We bless her. Yes, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for the anointing. Yes, you want to? Yeah, what you carry. There's things in your storehouse uh, that have been there for years. And um, there's still ministry uh, desires that you feel like have not yet come to their f the fr like the fullest fruition. And the Lord says there's a quick thing happening. And just speak to the reservoir that's underneath you. There's literally this reservoir, like this heritage. And I'm not sure if it came from like your mom or your dad, grandparents. And God says there's such a reservoir that, that's there. And, uh, and, uh, and it's even for provision, which you've actually seen numerous times. I know from your testimony, but God's going to have you speak and water's going to flow. <laughs> I'm the rock, man. And I just, I just want to bless her because she really is, you know, what I consider a psalmist. Some are worship, you know, some play, but she really gets to your heart. And I just want to honor her tonight because she helps me get into the heart of God and and we don't we don't overlook that and we bless you and I just I just want you to know that some of the miracles uh, that have happened some of the revivals uh, some of the the fruit of healings uh, the level of miracles God wants to say thank you because you help partner with me to bring that in you know and even if ministries you know kind of showcased off of it he really used you and there's so many good rewards for you in heaven man and when we get there we'll all know because your mansion is going to be big we love you amen give her a big god bless you guys let's do this i want debbie to 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 finish us up with worship i feel like god has given you a song am i right okay and so while she's doing that, listen, if you want to get baptized, it's during this song. Are you listening? So don't hang out in here. Go get baptized and come back and do another dip. But there is something right now about baptism. If you've gotten delivered and set free, if you're repenting of your sin tonight, there's so, baptism is supernatural. It's not just getting touched by water. It's a spiritual thing just like communion, okay? So if God has changed your life tonight and you're saying, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to follow you, Jesus. I want you to come over here and make a statement to the Lord. I'm ready to die with Christ and rise with Christ. All right, now's the time. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Take 